everybody, it is Saturday and it's definitely going to be a slow one. Where I am in South Africa, I'm in a summer rainfall sea, um, uh, area at the moment and we're having the last of our summer rains. It's already quite cool, it's no longer summer. We are heading into winter and I'm so thankful, I really like winter. The Cape region also has some rain, or they had some rain. For them it's the start of their rainy season, they are a winter rainfall season. So I'm thankful for the rain. It's a nice cool day today and it's definitely going to be a good slow Saturday. Yeah. Right. I have the Fame Boss tea on. It is finished and I'm so happy with it. I really, really like it. I was nipping at the end. This is all I have left of 500 grams of yarn. My bust measurement is 105 and I used a full 500 grams of yarn for this top. And it's got short sleeves and that is because the stitch pattern is so dense. I wanted it like this. I want to be able to wear it in summer without anything underneath but a bra. And I don't want my bra to show. So um, I wanted the stitch pattern to be dense and I knew it was going to be a yarn gobbler. It was just a little bit more of a yarn gobbler than I initially thought but it's there. And I love it. So this pattern will be released next weekend. I have an appointment with my photographer for Thursday. Thursday morning early I'm going to meet him at the French Toast Coffee Cafe at Little Paris. It's a tourist attraction here in town. My studio is there as well. I'm closing my studio down at the end of the month but my studio is still there. So we're going to take the photos there early Thursday morning so by Friday, Saturday next week you can look forward to a new crochet pattern. It came out really really well my tester is nearly done she's doing her sleeves today just to make sure that the last bit of the pattern is is um, understandable and correct and then it will be published also i'm actually going to publish four patterns next weekend this is the one this is a crochet pattern and then there's a second crochet pattern which is a shawl a triangular shawl that i designed in 2017 when we went to ireland on a yarn tour and i called it the ireland shawl and i had it on my website for a while as a nice to have and then i took it off and i wanted to put it on ravelry but i never got around to it for some obscure reason so one of my testers marlene or Dan, quickly crocheted it up again for photo purposes so I'm going to have that photographed as well on Thursday so you can look forward to a shawl as well by next weekend. And then I'm going to publish two knitting patterns as well. Now the one is also something that I've been putting off for a while. I've been knitting it for so long and I just never published it. And that's the little hat that everybody knows I wear. I used to shave my hair so I used to have very very short hair. I'm only now decided to grab my hair. So I used to wear these little hats. I have many of them and I still wear them on cold days. But they're just so comfy. It's a little bit of a slouchy hat you can see. And they're very nice to wear. I actually love to gift them as well. Um, I normally um, if I want to gift somebody something special I will knit a hat. I will take two hangs of yarn. I will knit one um, I will use one hank for the hat and the other hank I will use for a boomerang scarf and I then gift the two as a set. It makes, it makes for a very, very nice, very special gift. So this little hat is also coming next weekend. This one has been worn so much. I actually just took it out of the tumble dryer again this morning. I will have to take my lint remover and just um, give it a bit of a work over to get the pulling off so that it looks like new again. I have this grey one, I have a purple one, I have a lime green one, I have a turquoise one, I have a cerise pink one and a red one. Yeah. <laughs> so for me to, know, to use a pattern that many times you must know it's really something I like. So this little hat is coming out next week. I haven't got a name for the pattern yet. Hilda's hat sounds so lame. So I must, I must think of a name for the hat. So if you have a suggestion, give it to me. Okay, so... That's uh, two crochet patterns and that knitting pattern. And then I spoke to you a while ago about um, a cowl. And I actually knitted this cowl on the road trip. Because it was nice mindless knitting in the round while we were in the car. Um, 
it's actually the first time that I feel yeah I've got the size right now this is a nice cowl it's it's not too short it's not too high it's not too narrow it's not too wide I actually got the size damn perfect this time so I really really like this one but you will remember that I said to you I want to make a cowl that can transform into a beanie now I'm not going to show you the transformation now not yet I want to check something first but I'll show you the end result of the transformation hold on it has transformed into a beanie my plan worked <coughs> I'm so chuffed okay so this one will also come out next weekend hopefully I just want to check um, one or two things and uh, yeah I can't I can't wait I'm very excited about that one so two knitting patterns next weekend and two crochet patterns will be released I'm still looking for a name for the cowl and I'm looking for a name for the hat I'll find something if you have something in mind let me know okay so at the moment I'm working on a knitted project uh, a friend of mine my very very best friend she's got three daughters and a couple of years ago they bought a mass-produced jersey in a shop and very informal oversized block jersey two colors different patterns and the children have been nagging her to knit them something like that again but she can't find a pattern nowhere and obviously the item isn't available in the shops anymore so she said to me oh please design something like this so that i can make it for my kids and i thought oh, okay fine that's that's quite nice um interestingly i will be knitting it in the way my mother taught me to knit when i was a little girl and that is separate pieces that are sewn together afterwards to make that real oversized block jersey feeling so it will be a back and a front and the sleeves and you will sew it all together pick up the stitches and do the ribbing at the neck and that type of thing a real old-fashioned way of knitting but still very effective if you want that specific look which is what i want so i have got um, a nice delightful lime green and a dark gray that i'm working with and this is actually the first time in like more than 10 years that I've purchased yarn that has an acrylic content. I normally only work with natural fibers. This is a 75% merino and a 25% acrylic yarn and you can feel it. If, if I squish it like this I can feel the slight squeak of the plastic in there and it's a lot harder than what I'm used to. It's actually for me very hard but I understand from people that have used the yarn, they say it washes perfectly and then it softens up a bit. So I hope that will be the case. But if, if it isn't, I will just wear the jersey with a polo neck underneath that is soft to keep it away from my neck. Because it, it does feel a bit hard to me. It's not what I'm used to. But the, stif uh, the stitch definition on this yarn is very, very nice. And it's because it's got a high twist and um, it is a bit hard so you get a very good stitch definition so um, i've already done the bottom this is the ribbing of the front um, it's a mock ribbing i don't want it to pull in it must just hang it's a informal relaxed oversized block jersey so but i'm gonna do the front and the back together so when this one needs a few more rows and i'm gonna do it just now when i'm finished and then this afternoon I will sit in front of the TV with my feet on an ottoman and I will do the ribbing for the other side in the grey. It's going to be nice playful colours. Um, so I, I will only start to really type what I'm doing once I'm done with the two, two grips. And then I'll get going with the design. The design is in my head and it's... I like what I'm seeing in my head now it's just like always a challenge to translate what I have in my head into something written down so that other people can also get to the picture that I have in my head so yeah that's the planning um, I also don't have a name for this one yet but it will come eventually yeah okay so um, Vacheche is going well the first week 
it was launched last week I had to quickly make a video um, I think it was Monday I quickly had to make a video to show the people how to start the project it was a bit finicky and then I also did two live videos on the Vachetche group to talk them through some burning points so week two will be released tomorrow now if you want to join Vachetche you have to purchase the uh, pattern on Ravelry for five dollars and then you will get all the information on where to find the Facebook group that we can um, enjoy each other's company in and there's lots of support my tester is also there uh, and uh, yeah let's do it but Che Che I worked with Merino Yarn and my testers worked with Cotton Yarn both DK both in four millimeter needles and mine came out substantially bigger than theirs and that's simply because Merino is elastic and cotton is not. So what happens when you wash a Merino item? The moment it hits the water, the fibers relax. It stops fighting the twist of the stitches. It relaxes, it becomes softer uh, and it becomes bigger. And that is why always when I do a measure and make pattern for you, I will say to you, carry on until you can just pinch it under the arm because when you wash it it sort of relaxes and it gives that little bit more so oh the fan boss tea is also a measure and make pattern which means that you can use whatever yarn you want whatever uh, hook you want and it will work it does work it's um, it's a lovely way to do garment patterns it makes it so much easier for me as the pattern writer and it gives you as the crafter so much more freedom which is good all all the way around everybody benefits from it okay so Vachetche is on the way and then when I was in in the Cape now I um, paid Martin and Hester from Moya a visit and uh, we had a bit of a brainstorm about um, an upcoming crochet cowl that I want to do in the winter I'm going to start working on that next month as soon as the jersey is finished I want to do this sweater first because I want to wear it so I'm going to do this first and then straight after that I'm going to get into the blanket the blanket is in my head and I like what I'm seeing in my head I want to do the design in such a way that you can choose again which size you want to do I did that with the um, the lover of my soul giant granny crochet cowl I did that with the ripple cowl and I also did it with the air and caress knitting um, knit along that we did uh, I feel very strongly about this that people should have different options because not everybody wants to make a baby blanket but not everybody has the finances to make a king size blanket so at least I, I feel to include all the crafters that want to participate there should be different options available so that obviously makes the design a lot more challenging there's a lot more calculations that has to be done there's a lot more um, thinking that has to be done and planning but that is what I want to do and that is what I'm going to do so um, I'm going to put a call out for testers soon um, my my normal tester team they are tired they are overworked <laughs> they need a break and I think it would be a good thing to pull in a few new testers so if you are interested keep it in the back of your mind watch out keep an eye on the um, Ilona uh, Slow Life Creations Facebook group because that is where I will put out the call for testers um, if you are a South African that wants to test you would have to purchase a kit because the whole idea <coughs> pardon me of having um, a pattern like that tested by a lot of testers is to show the crafty community the different options in kits available what it is going to look like so I want one tester for each color combo that we're going to do um, international testers I would also appreciate them coming on board and I would need some info from you for instance if um, there's a certain cotton in America that's affordable and popular 
and somebody can test in that cotton then we can see what it looks like and maybe I can even have a chat with the yarn house and ask if they would be willing to give kits in America the same thing in the UK Europe so that crafters have access to a kit that has been tested um, in their own region not having to pay international couriers and um, import duties we know that makes our craft a whole lot more expensive so if you have any recommendations even if you don't want a tester if you want to tell me about a certain cotton a certain yarn house or whatever that is um, in your part of the world that you would like me to consider uh, you can drop me a note you can um, either comment on the post on Facebook where you see this video you can comment on YouTube where I post the video or whatever um, if you have me on WhatsApp or email you can email me you can WhatsApp me give me your suggestions I can't guarantee that I will fulfill your desire but at least I can have a look at it and choose the best option at the end of the day having said that I would prefer to work with small companies such as Moya rather than a massively big company I would like to give support to that small entrepreneurial business that are battling to survive in the current economic state of the world um, if you know somebody like that that dyes their own cotton ask them to contact me I would I would love to have a, a few options to look at okay so what did I miss I told you about the four items for which the patents will be released next weekend two knitted projects two crochet projects crochet is the fanboss tea and the Ireland shawl knitting is the hat that I always used to wear that still needs a name you can give me suggestions for that as well and and then the cowl that transforms into a beanie that one also needs a name let's have a competition I'll post it in the Ilona group so if you're not part of the Ilona Facebook group head over there and go join I will ask for name suggestions <coughs> for the items and the person who wins I will gift you the pattern it's not much but let's just have a bit of fun how's that yeah let's do that okay then on totally a different note we had quite a bit of rain here where I am in the last two weeks and I was getting very um, fed up with my dogs because there was these muddy paw prints all over the freaking floors and I had to mop the floors every day and then I opened Twitter and I saw what was going on in KZN. KZN KwaZulu Natal is one of the provinces in South Africa that sits on the east coast and um, they had masses of rain masses of rain they had so much rain much more than is normal for our country our country is actually considered to be in a dry region and it was so bad that houses collapsed I saw videos of flats stack flats that collapsed because of rain um, houses were swept away, bridges were swept away, roads were swept away. I saw a video of a petrol tanker that had been washed out to sea that what the rivers took it down to sea and the sea eventually threw it out on a beach. I saw a video of cargo containers, these containers that attack on ships, cargo containers floating down a highway. Um, the whole Toyota um, automotive manufacturer is underwater um, businesses have washed away places have been looted because that's what happens in South Africa whenever something breaks down it gets looted I saw women crying bitterly because their houses are just gone there's nothing left people died mothers lost children families lost mothers and fathers it's just so dreadful and I sat here and I thought my word and I'm complaining about muddy paw prints how pathetic you know we have to stop sometimes and just look at what's going on around us and decide to be grateful we have so much to be grateful for 
I spoke to a friend of mine in Hong Kong this morning. She's going through a tough time emotionally. Their whole family is. They haven't seen their family in, in um, the extended family. They haven't seen their extended family in more than three years because of COVID. They couldn't come back to South Africa to visit. And there's health issues. And there's school issues. And it's just so much. And she took out a ball of yarn that were made up of scraps. So it changes color. It changes texture. And... It's all over the place and she started to knit a boomerang shawl. Nothing fancy, just got a boomerang shape. And her teenage daughter looked at it and she said, Mommy, I really don't like this. This is ugly. And she said, I know, I think it's ugly too. And she said, well, why are you doing it? And she said, because it helps me to calm down. Our craft is something we really should be very grateful for. When times are tough and when your mind is all over the place, you grab a ball of yarn and a hook or a set of needles and you do something simple and you breathe. You breathe and craft through the trauma. I've done that many times in my life and I know I will do it many times still to come. We have so much to be thankful for. We have houses. We have food. We are alive. Our loved ones are still with us. And if, it's, if you've lost someone, treasure the memories and be thankful for the times that you've had. My mom always says there's always something to be grateful for. Sometimes you see it straight away, but sometimes you have to think about it. But you will find something to be grateful for. So let's make this a weekend of being grateful. I have so much to be grateful for. And I'm sure you do too. We're not all in the same financial situation. We're not all the same in the health conditions. We're not... Our lives differ so much, but there's one thing that we all have in common that we can all be grateful for today. We can craft. We can craft through the trauma times. So let's be grateful today. Let's, let's pick up our crafting. Let's breathe. Let's craft. Let's reflect. Let's be grateful. I think that's a good way to spend the slow Saturday. Let's breathe. Let's craft. Let's reflect. Let's be grateful. I will see you again next week on Slow Saturday. Have a blessed week.